I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan. This is the PC Engine Files, and today we are looking at Makai Prince Dorpachan, or as I like to call it, the prequel tales of Spike McFang. You may have heard of the twisted tales of Spike McFang. It is one of the most infamously expensive games that you can buy for Super Nintendo. Not the most expensive, but certainly up there on the higher end of the scale. I almost regret saying things like that given that it can make things go up in price even further, but at the same time, I'm not one of those 1 million YouTube subscribers or 100k with a plaque on the wall, so I don't think me commenting on what Spike McFane goes for will affect it that much more than the volatility of the market already does. Currently, Spike McFane goes for 157 loose 270 complete and 411 new. By comparison, this game, the prequel, goes for anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars. I've seen it on the low end complete for 50 with 10 dollars shipping from Japan, and I've seen very nice looking copies that have been well kept and well preserved for the higher end. So it's actually one of the more affordable PC Engine games all things given, especially if it was better known that Spike McFang is a sequel to this game, maybe it would be a lot more expensive than it currently is. You can tell right away it's a Spike McFang game because you're playing the exact same character. He's a little vampire boy with a top hat, and he can duck under the top hat. He can't throw it in this game, but when he's ducking under it, he can throw tomatoes, which act like bombs, and that's useful for taking out some of the bigger enemies that you face. The jumping physics are a little bit wonky. You will get used to it after a while, but you can't adjust your jump. When you hit the jump button, you go all the way up. You can't tap it a little for a small jump. You can't hold it for a big jump. You hit the button, He's going to jump as high as he possibly can for the full duration of the jump. At least you can kind of maneuver him while he's jumping in the air, but still it would have been nice to have a little more control over the jump. It's not an unbearable problem. It's just something you have to adjust to. There's a little bit of a bonk's big adventure mechanic going on here with Certain items that you pick up, they increase your power. And when Spike McFang is fully powered up like this, his outfit changes and he can shoot projectiles that travel a great distance. But if you take too many hits, you lose the power-ups and go back down to your previous state. If the video and the audio are slightly out of sync in the gameplay session, I'm sorry. I did the best I could, but I ended up playing this game for quite a long time, and unfortunately they did get a little out of sync when I was capturing it, though they do come back together by the end of this video, or pretty close to it. If I could capture both at the exact same time on the emulator, it would be great, but I have to use QuickTime Player for the video, and Audio Hijack for the audio. There doesn't seem to be any simple Macintosh solution for capturing all of them at once. I could always play it on the TurboGrafx-16 through the Super SD System 3, but then I never feel like the video quality is quite up to what I want for an episode of the PC Engine Files when I just point a camera at the TV. You always get that wire effect where it shows the lines of the screen kind of making a rainbow shimmering pattern on the television. At some point, maybe I'll just have a capture card, but I'm not even sure that would be the preferred solution for Super SD System 3 because I have the first version, not the upgraded HD version, so I would either be outputting it directly through a Sega Genesis cord or what I currently do, which I know causes some color distortion, I would be outputting it through the Sega Genesis Model 2 cord to one of those Sega Genesis to HDMI converters. I think the one I have is by Hyperkin. 
So it does output in HD to my television, but I don't think the colors are 100% accurate after being passed through that device and I wouldn't necessarily be comfortable with the video quality of that either, so... Not really a good solution except to capture the video in emulation. Now, Spike McFang has these stone statues that come along and help him every now and then, which is absolutely necessary in this game because it's a scrolling platformer, but some of their ideas of platforming are a little strange. Like, you'll drop from really great heights. Obviously, you don't take fall damage, which is a good thing, but you'll also have to ascend to great heights at times, and even with the very long jump that Spike McFang has, he can't jump nearly the distances required, so you'll have to ride the statue all the way up, or sometimes you'll be in an area where you can't reach the section below, and the statue will have to jump upside down, bashing its head into the ground repeatedly until it makes a hole for you to enter the area. And how do you summon the statues? There's a little dragon with a bell around its neck that flies by, which just immediately makes me think of Zelda and Irene getting mad at when you ring the bell in that Game Grumps video. Come on, Irene. Like I never heard that one before. Just get on the fucking broom. Yeah, it does look like that to me when you're summoning the statues by jumping up and touching the dragon to ring his little bell. Or you might think of that old song. You could ring my bell, ring my bell. Anyway, this boss is really weird. So far, you've been battling these little cloves of garlic and these little monsters. And all of a sudden, you've got this cybernetic thing. Looks like a cat crossed with a robot and it's actually easier if you jump on its head and duck and throw the bombs because then the bombs land on its head and do a lot of damage unfortunately it'll jump up and mash you into the ceiling to knock you off so that only works for so long but it's the most effective strategy i found for fighting this boss i would say this is a very good, fun, enjoyable platforming game for PC Engine probably even goes so far as to say it's underrated just because I really don't see people talk about this when they talk about PC Engine games and I'm just surprised at that given that it's actually part of the Spike McFing I don't know if you would go so far as to call it series but games featuring the Makai Prince it's certainly not the only one. Besides this game and Twisted Tales of Spike McFane, they also appeared in Super Naxxet Open, which was a golf game for Super Famicom. So there are no less than three games in this series, and I think these characters have been featured in other Taxen slash Naxxet games. So it's just one of those lost in localization things, I guess, because... Only one of those games came out in the United States and wasn't printed in great quantities and became a sought-after collector's item as a result when people started trying to complete their collections post-SNES era when the games originally came out. There was probably a time when you could have walked into a Funko Land or something like that and bought a used copy of Twisted Tales of Spike McFang for 5-10 bucks, but those days are long gone. So maybe do yourself a favor, while this game is still modestly priced, I mean, $50 isn't cheap, don't get me wrong, but compared to Spike McFang, it's certainly more accessible. And might be more accessible literally, too, because the gameplay mechanics are much simpler here. You don't have to worry about throwing your hat or moving in four directions I guess you could argue eight directions, but I usually just move up, down, left, right. And you don't have to do the RPG elements like collecting keys and items and cards and whatnot that you do in Spike McFang. It's a very straightforward game. You platform left to right, up and down. You collect the items, you destroy the monsters, you avoid the... How should I say? The perils of being a Dracula boy... Because, like, 
water hurts you, garlic hurts you, certain items that the enemies drop are bad for your health. Like, the red ones you can pick up because they're like miniature tomatoes, but the pink ones, don't touch those because they actually damage your health. They must be infused with holy water or something. Bottom line, try this one. Find a copy of it if you don't want to spend the $50 because... I always say that, and I'm going to stand by that. Try before you buy. With retro game prices increasing all the time, and ridiculous things that we've seen this year, like a sealed Super Mario 64 selling for $1.5 million at auction, which a lot of people think was fake anyway, because there was probably a shill bidder for the actual auction site driving up the price and making whoever actually won it pay more to win if the winning bidder was even legitimate, which we don't know. But I can honestly tell you, $1.5 million for a sealed Super Mario 64 is a joke as far as I'm concerned because there was a day and time when I could have bought 10 of those at Toys R Us when they were going out of business. And I mean, not the big bankruptcy liquidation, just one local TRU that closed. Because we had two in the town where I lived in, one closed and the other stayed open for another 10, 15 years until the entire chain went out of business. But when that first one closed, they had a liquidation sale. They were getting rid of all their N64 stock. Because this is back in the time where GameCube had just, just come out. And I went in there and man, I got so many N64 games, but I only got one of each in the liquidation sale. I got one Conker's Bad Fur Day, I got one Super Mario 64, so on and so forth. I wasn't buying them to resell them decades down the road. It didn't even occur to me to do that. And I don't feel bad that I broke the seal on my Super Mario 64 because... I don't think it would sell for one and a half million dollars today if I'd kept it shrink wrapped. I'm very skeptical of that. I'm very skeptical of the winning bid on that. I'm very skeptical of people who hoard rare video games thinking that they will someday be worth ten times what they paid for them now. Those markets collapse. We see it all the time. Coin collecting that collapsed, stamps that collapsed. Those things have actually held value better than things like Elvis Presley memorabilia. That collapsed hugely when those buyers aged out and their families liquidated their collections and no new collectors were coming in buying Elvis stuff. So that stuff goes for a song compared to what it used to. And someday all of us in this hobby will age out too and all of our stuff will be sent to a Goodwill or a thrift store or liquidated by our families. And then all these things that people think are worth hundreds or thousands of dollars will be selling for pennies on the dollar compared to what they were worth because there will be so much stuff that floods the market. So if you're thinking that's an investment, I would say buy stocks or bonds instead. But even that's a risk. I mean... Companies do go bankrupt, companies get into financial scandals, look what happened to Enron, so there's really no such thing as a safe investment. What you should buy isn't an investment, it should be things you enjoy playing and are going to have fun with. And I think Makai Prince Dorobachan is something you'll have fun with. So is Twisted Tales of Spike McFang, I just can't recommend paying the price for it when there are more affordable ways to play it. Although if there's ever a reprint on it through somebody like Limited Run Games that sells it complete in box for 50, 60 bucks, I'd probably get that. I could understand that. That would be worth it because they'd pack in some nice extras and make it a really premium product and it would sell complete in box for a third of what the full game does. Anyway, I kind of got off topic there, but I do like Makai Prince Torbuchan and I think it's a fun game. I would play it, emulate it, maybe buy it if you really enjoy it after you've tried it, and go with it in the future, because it will be fun repeatedly. It seems like a very quality PC Engine platforming game. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan, this is the PC Engine Files, thank you for watching.